Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of uh, Light Movement. Um, so we used to be known as Milan Art Podcast and before that we were Light Movement. Uh, and so we decided to go back to Light Movement just because we feel like that resonates more with mm -hmm. the idea of the show and what we talk about. And uh, so today we're gonna be talking about what is the new Light Movement? Um, so Ellie, do you want to, like what, what is the new Light Movement to you? Because you're sort of like, the pioneer of it in in a lot of ways. You know, you you founded Milan Art Institute, you founded Milan Art, uh, and you know, you're this teacher with 25 years of experience as a professional artist. You know, you've been paving the way for artists in a lot of um, in a lot of ways. You know, mm -hmm. so what what is the New Light movement to you? Or you could start with how that name came to you. Yeah, because yeah, you've never yeah. even kind of talked about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Um, I don't know about like necessarily being a pioneer of it. I feel like I sort of woke up to the revelation of what it is. I feel like, and there's a lot of people out there that actually, I think um, that I think that's why it's resonating with so many people. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'm the only one. I think there's lots of people. As I talk to people, there's a lot of people that that share these same thoughts, and and they've arrived there kind of on their own. So when I think of it. Um, it's to me a movement that's definitely hitting the arts, like a renaissance of the arts. It's a movement that's going global. It's all across the world. Every four corners of the earth is uh, sort of coming into this. And, uh, and to me, the best way to describe it um, in a really condensed, concise way is, um, you know, everybody, if you remember back in like, uh, 2012 was was when the world was going to end mm -hmm. yeah. right and the mayan calendar and and there was you know these people that were you know uh i remember i was in budapest and i saw these people in yellow t-shirts that were you know taking to the streets and saying the world's going to end the world's going to end and and so everybody thought 2012 you know the world would end and i would say it did it, it ended did. yeah it did huh. it ended in 2012 and so that was the close of an epoch of uh and if you study this out and you you really research history art history you'll you'll see it um that was the end of an epoch of the age of reason so mm. from high renaissance until 2012 we lived under this epoch or this era in time where man was the sum of all things and it started in the renaissance and the artist was a celebrity the genius was the artist the artist was the genius and everything became humanistic everything was uh, because man was the sum of all things and uh, everything is about logic and reason and not to say that those you know logic and reason are bad um, but i think from 2012 on uh, we are coming into a new uh, epoch and we, we there was sort of a transition time and now i would say 2020 is bad as it you know, sort of felt to everyone, and uh, and you know there were some negative things that happened. It was literally the shift um, that brought us into this light movement or into this new epoch, this new time. And so counterintuitive, though. You know, for like a lot is. of people watching, they're probably like, "What?" Like, yeah, because twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, because what happened is 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 there's this great awakening. Mm -hmm. There's a great awakening politically, there's a great awakening spiritually, there's a great awakening artistically and creatively, uh, innovation, and and it all plays, and what it, what's the common denominator? And I didn't come up with this, by the way. This isn't, you know, I didn't invent this. I just sort of realized it or, mm -hmm. you know, um, came, came, came into the revelation of it um the common denominator between all of this is light like on a scientific level like light mm -hmm. but it's whether it's science or spirituality it's one in the same it's it's light and um so you know uh even i don't know i mean we can talk about like quantum things later but um <laughs> uh you know, and how, how I, I kind of got the name or, or you know, yeah. is I, I sensed that something was happening, um, you know, back from, it kind of started for me in about 2008. And I was sensing that something was shifting, something was changing. And all of a sudden, you know, I used to just paint, sell art, paint, sell art, paint, sell art. And it felt like I was on this hamster wheel and it was never ending and there was no purpose to it. It was just paint, paint and sell, paint and sell. 
and I wanted my life to have more meaning and more purpose to it and I um, was hungry I was hungry for knowledge I was hungry for revelation and every as I began sort of losing everything from that uh, what we had created and and you know selling art to, to you know this industry and the art world this whole new life for me was being created simultaneously and uh, the school came about we opened the school in 2010 and that was a part of my life starting to have more meaning and even though I still sell art it's much more purposeful and meaningful because I'm teaching other artists mm -hmm. how to sell art and 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 of course you know you and your career and everything took off so Around this time, after I started the school, uh, I started to sense that a, a renaissance was coming, and 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 art seemed to be like really catching ground and traction. And all of a sudden, I was seeing these like sip and dip and paint paint party wine and you know the art was everywhere. For coloring everybody. books, mm -hmm. coloring books didn't hit the scene until like two thousand. Adult coloring books. Uh, yeah, adult coloring books, right? And that doesn't mean a. a Adult coloring no. books, <laughs> like <laughs> complex, you yeah. know, detailed coloring books for adults, like <laughs> yeah. Zentangle Zentangles, kind of, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, all these things came started coming about, like Ink Tangle and Zentangle and all that. And I started to see like everybody and and collectors, our collectors started to get younger, and um, mm. and and it was like a wider field, and there was just this thirst for for art, and there was artists everywhere. Everybody wanted to be an artist, and. And there was how-to videos and YouTube videos, and it just was something was changing. You could feel it. Anyway, um, so I uh, I was really you know inquiring of God and just I kept hounding God and asking God like what's happening? What's happening? Tell me what's happening. And I started to get this sense of um, you know I was studying light and I was studying like the science behind it and color mm -hmm. theory and how colors work and 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 pigments and different things and warm and cool and temperature and coming and going and all that and um and and i would and so i was kind of almost frustrated because i just kind of heard silence like nothing crickets from god and um and then one day i was really just kind of frustrated exasperated and i was like tell me the name of the movement and i just heard in in you know just in my heart it wasn't you know audible i mean i just heard in my heart you know, really quiet but clear. It's called light movement. And I was like, kind of disappointed. I'm like, that doesn't have a ring to it. It totally has a ring I to was it. Thinking, I was thinking, uh, I mean, oh. um, a new word or something. Yeah. <laughs> and I was Stark like, Lark and Lark. <laughs> <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> Yeah, but then the more I got thinking about it and I started putting all the pieces together and I started adding up all the things that were out there and that I was hearing and that, you know, were breaking through. And now today, it's crystal clear, obvious, for sure, guaranteed, like that it's all about light. It's all yeah. about, um, you know, this, this uh, you know, Energy. where we're headed. <laughs> yeah, where we're headed. And... Uh, and it's super exciting. There's literally no better time to be alive than right now, especially mm -hmm. as an artist, especially as an artist. Yeah. Because artists are like the front of the antenna. Like you see it for, you, you pick it up, you, you pick up, it starts to, you know. We are the antenna. Art yeah. moves culture. Yeah, we're the antenna. Like mm -hmm. artists are the antenna. They're, they have this extra sensory sensibility towards these new things mm -hmm. that are out there and... Um, and that's why artists sound crazy sometimes. I know I sounded crazy for years <laughs> and now I'm like, see, I wasn't crazy. <laughs> um, so what do you guys, what, what do you think the catalyst is for the light movement? Uh -oh. oh, that's weird. Just, oh, got an Amber alert guys. That's not good. Okay. Well, praying for, praying for that person. Um, that's sad. <laughs> right? Um, well, anyways, what, is, what do you think the catalyst or either of you guys can answer mm -hmm. it? I know I, what I would say is catalyst, but I'm curious what you guys would say. Um, hmm. I think what, I don't know if this is a catalyst. I just know it's part of this whole movement is like the type of art that's coming out is so different from 
just anything that's come before mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. in the past art was just created for art's sake and like nobody really knew nobody gave like meaning to art it wasn't like symbolic or personal or it just it it was like always to like prove a point or something you know like yeah. frivolous and so now i think everything in like this movement and i feel like we have Maybe we're not the first ones who have started this movement, but in a way it feels like we are. Like just everything at Milan Art Institute, like what we're teaching and what we've found through our painting, it's like there's like deep meaning in it and we let the painting become what it wants to be. And it definitely impacts people and it's very powerful and and it's always positive. Like it is, we're painting light. Like it's not anything dark or creepy and <laughs> what do you think is the catalyst? Well, first, I want to respond to what you just said. I think it is a really interesting observation. Um, you know, like art having more meaning now, because like, it's and more what spiritual. Was, who was it in the seventies? Somebody said art is dead. Yeah. Who who was it? Duchamp. Duchamp. Yeah. What that was even earlier than the seventies, right? It yeah, was it might like have been forties or I don't know. I need to brush up on the art history, but um, it's just interesting because it's like. He said art is dead, and now, um, there's that Amber alert back, uh, and now it's like, like, art has more meaning than ever, you know? Yeah. And it's like all this convergence of art, too. And I think, for me, that's a huge part of the light movement. But I'm gonna back up to say what I think the catalyst was, because yeah. I think um, the internet, mm-hmm. and like everyone being connected is uh-huh. like the catalyst. I think that the world, yeah. like borders sort of being, erased and like information being available to everyone and like like not just some information but most information like that's out there i mean of course there's some you know things that are harder to find but and sometimes you have to look harder to find the information even with you know the world wide web Mm -hmm. but this interconnectivity of the entire world is what i think is like a huge catalyst and like it's the tipping point for the light movement. It's like it's what it's like what's bringing together like art and music and science and engineering and all these things are coming together and people are able to see each other and all these other things and become inspired by it. Like when in the past was an artist able to listen to music and headphones? I mean, I know you know with like cassette players or whatever. Like <laughs> I'm in my Walkman. 20s, so yeah, Walkman or whatever. Um, you know, they could listen to it music with headphones, but even then, I'm sure not all artists had those. You know, mm-hmm. but now it's like every single artist has a a speaker or a pair of headphones and yeah. is able to listen to music while they paint. Mm-hmm. And like, that's mm-hmm. crazy. You know, I get chills just thinking about like how monumental that is and how yeah. a lot of artists I feel like take it for granted. But um, not necessarily for granted, but like just don't. Yeah, don't realize that wasn't Van Gogh didn't. Yeah, probably, you know Monet wasn't what listening if, to music. Yeah, we, what if Leonardo da Vinci? I mean, maybe he did have like a whole quartet playing, you know, songs. Yeah, or but, like, but maybe you know, I mean, if imagine if he would have had like, you know, a symphony playing for him in his head while he was painting, yeah. like, it's amazing. Yeah, the uh, the internet gives us such a um, platform and way to reach people and connect mm-hmm. and share your art and share uh, ideas and 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 really connect with people all over the world. And the interesting thing about the internet is it's it's like this thing that you can't see or touch. It's intangible. Yeah. It's you know few people know how it actually works. Uh, you know, it's like when I was a kid and, you know, I thought there was little miniature actors that lived in the television. (laughs) Oh my gosh. And and it was like, I still don't know how a television works, you know? And so it's like, it's, it's this thing that's just sort of in the air that, that is intangible. It's, it's almost like a second heaven or that space between heaven and earth. Um, and, and really, I think it's a battleground. I don't think it's just all so good. Mm-hmm. I think there's yeah. a, a oh, tremendous course. amount of evil and destruction and horrific things that are also on the internet or the internet is, is a vehicle for those things mm-hmm. to transpire. And I think it's, it's where the war is won. And I think whoever occupies and, and has dominion over the internet, 
Um, and I don't mean a power, I mean people uh, in numbers and mass. And that's why it's so important for artists to get their artwork up there mm -hmm. and share beauty and just flood mm -hmm. the internet. With Occupy. <laughs> Occupy, you know. Occupy the internet. Occupy the internet. You gotta make a shirt. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and so I think that that, that is why these uh, you know, movements can be so collective and so grand and so big. I mean, what if the internet was around during the Renaissance or all these other movements that happened? What if the Impressionists had access to the internet, right? What, mm -hmm. if, what if Cubists could, could gather and, and you know, share their ideas and, and impact th with the tools that the internet would, could afford them? Yeah. Like, crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Well, and the cool thing about the internet is that it works on light. Like, data is transferred, at least with, you know, like, uh, oh gosh, now I'm forgetting. What is the name? It's not uh, cable, it's fiber, fiber optic. optic. Yeah. yeah, at least with like fiber optic internet, which is what like all major internet providers, at least if even if you don't have it to your house, like the cables between different internet like towers or locations or whatever are run with fiber optic Yeah, cables. I mean, what we're doing right now light. is through fiber optics yeah right exactly so it's like and if it wasn't for fiber optics that we got miraculously out here in the sticks yeah uh, <laughs> middle of nowhere guys middle of nowhere. <laughs> it truly is a miracle uh you know we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing right now mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it is i mean and we're able to be on youtube and like and instagram through light and it's like i mean it's just light is everything you know yeah. like everything is light and sound I'm, I'm a big proponent of sound too, so. <laughs> but, um, but even if you think about it, music, all music now is, electro uh, is electronically recorded. And so, you know, it's recorded through light too. Yeah, and, and <laughs> isn't there a relationship? I mean, the stars, which are great sources of light, yeah. e emit sound. Mm -hmm. And there's actually an, an orchestra in, in the heavens in this, you know, what do they call that? A, the celestial? No. What yeah, the celestial. The galaxies, whatever. Galaxies. Yeah. yeah. That, that create, there's people that have recorded the sound of stars. Yeah, and I it know. And yeah. actually has harmony. And you can, if you, if you Google just, um, what would they Google? Like the sound of the stars. Sound of the stars. There's a or recorded sound oh, of the like stars. It's like the symphony of the stars or something like that. Yeah, I so, actually took yeah, a I recording. Yeah, I was just about to say, you're making a song with stars. It's incredible. Yeah. And a it's whale incredible. song. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, yeah, I took, no, it's not the whale one, it's the remix that I did. Um, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> it was a while ago, but I took a recording of like eight different stars and Jupiter. Jupiter actually has a sound too. Yeah. And like put that, it, just kind of like as a layer in the song, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, but also a catalyst, I, 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 uh, I mean, I know I talk a lot, but I, I want to weigh no, in on cool. that because <laughs> I, I love what you both said a lot. Um, but for me, I think a huge catalyst is passion. Mm. It's, it's passion is, is a, an ingredient, a key ingredient. And maybe yeah. there isn't just one it's really catalyst. True. It's, it's multiple things oh, it that, is, yeah. that, you know, bring it about. But I think passion is, is so important. And it's like, if you, if you look at history and if you look at what humans have done, there's, there's this great story that's played out where, um, I mean, I know I lived in, in Greece for, for a while in the past, and just to like put diapers on my kid, keep them clean, feed them, clothe them, and give them water, it took most of my day. I mean, there was, I didn't have a dishwasher, I didn't have a dryer. I didn't, just to get your clothes clean, I had to, you know, like, wash them the washing machine took like like three hours and then i had to like you know hang them up to dry cooking dinner was like there was no instant anything which is good actually but <laughs> i i had to it just it took a lot of effort there is no hello fresh <laughs> yeah, there's no hello fresh and now it's like we we live in this like this like the best of everything there's so, there's so much, much choice time. yeah and there's so many things that save your time if mm -hmm. you want to take that you don't yeah. have to but if you want to mm -hmm. and you can devote yourself to the things that you're passionate about and we're all passionate about something different i happen to be passionate about art and 
and destiny and people and w people's purpose and worth and value here on earth. That's, that is what, what my purpose is or what I'm passionate about. And, you know, like here we have uh, Honey Mama Chocolate. Their passion is to make chocolate. Really good. Is, yeah, if you've never had Honey Mama <laughs> really Chocolate, good. it is incredible. It's like healthy chocolate, too. It's, it's yeah. not it's just vegan, like... It's <laughs> vegan, too. It's vegan, and they, they, um, they sweeten it with honey, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and th so I can eat it, because I, I really try to steer clear of sugar. So... Um, yeah, so I'm I'm a big fan, and they're so <laughs> passionate about what they do. Mm -hmm. It's a passion. This isn't just a drudgery or a job or a you know. This isn't Hershey's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh no. This is a passion, and there's people that make coffee, mm -hmm. and it's a passion. There's people that grow beans for that coffee, and it is a passion. There's people that make the coffee cups, and it's their passion, mm -hmm. right? And that's that would be this new renaissance or this light I totally movement agree. Mm -hmm. is yeah. for everybody to live their purpose and find that vehicle that they're passionate about that they can communicate their 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 purpose through and so uh you know art isn't my purpose art is my vehicle my purpose is to um help people find their purpose and their value and their worth that's my purpose but but i use art as my vehicle and so uh but it starts with passion and if and we're coming into time which goes back to light it goes back to you know supercomputers quantum computers uh you know medi the medical industry being completely uh uh renovated with light and and where people will be healed literally with light and no need for pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. there's there's so many things coming in the realm of light that's going to radically change any everything that everybody will be free to live their passion and not be stuck in some job they mm -hmm. don't like so you go oh who's going to build the roads right people ask well who who's going to build the roads are the jobs that well, no one likes yeah or the jobs nobody likes or well, the jobs that people think that nobody likes exactly <laughs> yeah. it's like it's a mindset it's a yeah. mindset and who you know the, ha, we probably won't have roads we we'll won't transcend have roads mcdonald's because somebody who's passionate about uh transportation is going to come up with a different way of of doing something and so if we the boring if, company <laughs> if, yeah i mean if we if everybody applied themselves to their passion and what they love what they truly love um, where we would all be knit together in mm -hmm. this beautiful, harmonious fabric that would create this glorious heavenly world, um, that everything would complement synergy. Yeah, yeah. There would be synergy between all I of it. I think, um, I just like everything you're saying and, uh, just what you were saying in the beginning of how it's kind of a great awakening that like this light movement is an awakening for everybody to like just become who they really are and find like what they're passionate about and just step into it. And so that's, that's what I think it is like all wrapped together. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it's just so important to know that like every single per uh, person has their place in this. Yeah. Like it's not just reserved for a few people. All people. It's like every single person is significant. Has, yeah, important. Ha and has their own purpose too. Yeah. It's like they, and like, if you search within yourself, every person has that passion. And sometimes, like, like society literally is designed right now, it seems like sometimes. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But sometimes it seems like it's designed to suck your purpose or your passion yeah. away from you. Yeah. Especially, like, the school, school. system, mm -hmm. nine-to-five yeah. jobs. like College. Yeah, a lot of colleges, <laughs> too. Like, and Yeah, we're, we're literally, from birth until you wake up... <laughs> we're we're being brainwashed out of our destiny yeah and and there's this incredible indoctrination that happens and it's it's embedded in everything particularly tv uh hollywood the news um you know pop culture uh it, the education system the banking system the money system the political i mean everything name a system name a, an established system they're all meant to indoctrinate away from mm -hmm. this what we're talking about that that passion that the individual has you have to fight against it you have to be that fish swimming against stream you yeah, have exactly. to be mm -hmm. a standout you have to fight you have to persist and fight there's an incredible uh, world resistance against you to live your destiny anybody who's walking in their destiny and is living out 
can will attest to that. Yeah. They will tell you it was a fight to get here. It was I had to fight and scratch and claw my way to get here. It it doesn't come easy. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. And I don't think that's the way it's gonna be in the future. I don't think it's gonna be that way for your kids. <laughs> I think your kids will be born into the light movement and they will just be what what they're supposed to be and they'll never have to work against that and they'll go farther mm -hmm. because we we waste a lot of energy and time having to overcome having to overcome and so we're, we're carrying this baton for the future generations but it's like we can only go so far and so much and we're sort of uh pioneers um uh you know too many metaphors, but you know, I was thinking like we're, we're pioneers, like digging the soil, but that's a farmer. So it's like, no, we're, we're pioneers exploring the stars. Yeah. But it's like, it's like whenever you're making a new path, mm -hmm. it, there's a, a tremendous amount of resistance you're chopping down and so oh, yeah, stuff yeah. to yeah. make a path. Yeah. yeah. And well, it's like, there's a lot of resistance in the air when you're trying to get a spaceship up off the ground. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. A rocket, it expends 90% of its energy just on liftoff. Yep. So, um, yeah, and that's what it's like. That's where we're at, and that is this generation. So I would say anybody who's listening, if this resonates with you, do not give up the fight. It, mm -hmm. is, it, is, your, it mandate. is your mandate to, to fight and, and, and persist and persevere and, and resist all that, like, division and, and judgmentalness and, and you know, that, that that system is trying to put on us. Or yeah. being a victim. Yeah, or being a victim. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like we're more powerful than we know and, and God is on our side and there's a tremendous resource of, through spirituality, through God, there's tremendous resource to fight. You don't do it on your own. You don't have to do it on your own. There's, there's uh, you know, you partner with the light and you, you walk with the light, you mm -hmm. know, we're, we're Luke, you're Skywalkers. <laughs> <laughs> we're Jedis. I believe that, you know, like I grew up with Star Wars. Every generation has grown up with Star Wars, mm -hmm. right? What did you have? You had the lightsaber. Every little kid, you had him, you had him, I had him, and I'm a way different generation than you. Everybody listening had them. There's not one generation alive that, that doesn't know star wars why is that it's this it's more than a trilogy how many how many stories are there nine they got nine movies now Eight i don't nine. know so yeah and, and plus so disney's just running with it with mandalorian okay, and then there's all the it, side but it's yeah. it's hit every generation and what is it that that we're jedis every mm -hmm. every little kid i did it, what little kid doesn't watch star wars and think maybe i'm a jedi yeah. I oh think my gosh. I'm a Jedi. Yep. Yeah. Totally. With our lightsaber. With our. Or that's Took not. It's not seriously. a saber. It's a light. Light. <laughs> what do they call it? It's a lightsaber. Yeah. Lightsaber. That's right. Yeah. I mean, me and my brother, we ha we used to play with um, uh, wrapping paper uh, uh, tubes. Tubes. Yeah. And they were our lightsabers, and we would just like you know, <laughs> duke it out. Yeah, I think that it's like, ah, uh, I'm just. I'm I'm stuck on what you said earlier about like the victim mentality and mm -hmm. it's just like so important for people to realize that like when you put yourself as a victim or like when you even believe that you're the victim of things it's more energy than it is than it requires to just overcome that yeah and like and if you don't believe that you're a victim then there's a lot less to overcome too it's just yeah I don't know. It's like the next, I can't wait, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's going to be such a, I mean, it already is such an amazing time, you know, and it's so exciting to just think that we're in the middle of liftoff. Yeah. You know, I yeah. just, I love it's that. It's true. We're in the middle of liftoff. That's exactly what it is. And right now we're just feeling that G force, you oh, know, yeah. on our chests and everybody can feel it. Everybody around the world can yeah. feel it right now. Yeah. But, and, and that is why there, there's a huge shaking. There's a worldwide shaking. And um, that, and a lot of people don't know this, but in um, Antarctica, there is just an unprecedented yeah. mm -hmm. amount of just back to back to back huge earthquakes. Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, huh. and and it's like it that is a manifestation of this this liftoff, you know. And it's interesting that it's the South Pole, you know. That, yeah. And huh. and so anyway, it's it's it is um, definitely a fascinating, wonderful time to live, for sure. Yeah, 
Well, I honestly, I can't believe it's already been 30 minutes. It's like these these podcasts are just flying by. We might have to start making them longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was just a fantastic conversation. I, mm-hmm. I love that. And I love every time we talk about the light movement and like what it is. And um, we'd love to hear what you guys think about the light movement and in the comments. And, um, you know, what is your place in the light movement? Where, what are you most passionate about? We want you guys to like have your own answer for that. And if you don't have an answer for that, just like everybody does have an answer. So you just have to keep searching, uh, even if it's not readily available. Cause for some people, like we said before, you know, like society wants to keep you from that. And sometimes you have to fight, but it's the fight worth fighting. Uh, so thank you guys for watching this. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, tune in next week. We'll be here same time, 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and on Instagram Live. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week.